All right, so now we're going to try and understand how the Fed attempts to close a recessionary gap by using monetary policy tools. So if you look over here, here's an aggregate market graph. You can see, here's the long run aggregate supply curve, natural real GDP. You can see that uh, market equilibrium here, aggregate demand, short run aggregate supply are intersecting here. So the short run um, equilibrium is less than uh, is, you know, natural real GDP. So we're not in long run equilibrium. Real GDP is less than natural real GDP, meaning that we are in a recessionary gap in the economy, right? And because real GDP is low, that means that unem the unemployment rate is high. Our unemployment rate is higher than the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, which would, if, if remember that uh, NAIRU is associated with output at natural real GDP, right? All right, so here's what we need to do. We know that in order to close the recessionary gap, we either need to increase short run aggregate supply or increase aggregate demand. Well, monetary policy uh, tools do not work through aggregate supply, they work through aggregate demand. So what we're trying to do is, we're trying to increase, we want to increase aggregate demand, okay? And what we just saw in the previous lesson segment is that increasing aggregate demand requires uh, an increase in the money supply. So what the Fed is thinking here is we need to increase the money supply because if we increase the money supply, we know that the end result will be an increase in aggregate demand and that an increase in aggregate demand will be a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve. It'll close the recessionary gap. So this is the circumstance and the mindset of the Federal Reserve when they're thinking about their, um, uh, how, how to deal with monetary policy. Well, what we just learned in the previous lessons is this, is that there are three monetary policy tools, and so our three choices are open market operations, uh, the discount rate, and then the third option is the reserve ratio. Now, this is in order of how they're going to use it. You know, they're going to do this on a day-to-day -day basis. If this isn't working, then they'll move to this. If this doesn't work, then they're going to move to this. This is, like I said, this is like hitting the panic button, okay? Now, if you look back at your notes, you'll notice that in order to uh, increase the money supply, um, what the Fed would need to do is buy government securities in the open market. So the Fed is going to buy government securities in the open market, which will result in an increase in bank reserves, right? So when they, uh, when they buy, they're taking bonds out of the market and putting money into the economy. And the way that they put the money into the economy is by putting the money, depositing the money into the bank reserves uh, of the banks that are, that are selling those bonds. Now, when the bank reserves increase, that's going to lead to an increase in the monetary base. An increase in the monetary base triggers uh, money creation, which will result in an increase in the money supply. And now we understand, based on the money market, that an increase in the money supply is going to lead to a decrease in interest rates. And we just saw in, a, in uh, the previous lesson that an increase in in or a decrease in interest rates is going to encourage more spending among consumers and more spending among businesses. So we will have an increase in consumption and an increase in investment. When these two things increase, they are, they are a part of total expenditure. So we will have an increase in total expenditure and an increase in total expenditures associated with an increase in aggregate demand. And when aggregate demand increases, that's going to be a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve. So the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right, AD prime. I know that's a really wonky looking aggregate demand curve. And now look what's happening. Rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve. And now the uh, short run equilibrium in the economy lines up with long run equilibrium. We're going to have an increase in 
in real GDP, and when real GDP increases, we're going to have a decrease in the unemployment rate, and that should bring us down to NAIRU. And so this increase in aggregate demand is going to lead to an increase in real GDP and a decrease in the unemployment rate. That's going to close the recessionary gap and put us back into long-run equilibrium where we are accomplishing our three penultimate goals of macroeconomics. And then hopefully we're also achieving uh, maximum aggregate utility for all the people in society. When the Fed does this, when they take action to increase the money supply so that they can increase aggregate demand, so that they can increase real GDP and decrease the unemployment rate, this is called expansionary monetary policy. That's what this is called. The Fed is being called on to uh, implement expansionary monetary policy. So anytime they want to increase the money supply, no matter what the mean, it is expansionary mo monetary policy. All right, so let's say that this doesn't work. Let's say that this doesn't close the recessionary gap. We're still in a recessionary gap. Uh, we didn't have the effect on aggregate demand that we hoped that we would have. So the Fed may move to the discount rate. And if you look back at your notes, you'll notice, you recall, that to increase the money supply, the Fed would decrease the discount rate. And that when they decrease the discount rate, that that is going to lead to an increase in bank reserves. Now, why are bank reserves going up? Because banks are now interested in borrowing more money from the Fed so they can loan it out. And when they borrow money uh, to, and increase their bank reserves, uh, bank reserves are a part of the monetary base. So that's an increase in the monetary base. And an increase in the monetary base is going to trigger money creation, which will increase the money supply, which will lead to a decrease in interest rates, encouraging households to spend more money. So we'll have an increase in consumption and an increase in investment because businesses will also be encouraged to spend more money. And both of those things will, uh, are associated with total expenditure. So we'll see a, an increase in total expenditure, which is associated with an increase in aggregate demand, a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve, increasing real GDP, and closing the recessionary gap, returning us to long-run equilibrium, and by Oaken's law, also decreasing the unemployment rate. So we'll have lower unemployment, and people are happy. Okay, And the Fed knows that this is what they're affecting. So if buying in, in the open market, you know, if they can't do enough to affect the economy, they'll move to lowering the discount rate, and hopefully that will then uh, um, ex, you know, expand the economy, you know, cause people to spend more money, increase aggregate demand, and increase uh, real GDP. All right, so let's say that this doesn't work. Let's say that we're in such bad shape. We're in a huge recession, uh, and, and the Fed is like, look, we've already cut rates like three or four times. We don't, we don't know what's going on. We don't know how we're going to fix the economy. They may move to changing the reserve ratio. And in order to increase the money supply, if you look back at your notes, you'll see that we said that they will decrease the reserve ratio in order to increase the money supply. Why? Because decreasing the reserve ratio will do two things. It will increase the potential deposit multiplier and it will increase excess reserves, right? So banks will have more excess reserves that they can loan out because what were required reserves are now extra money because the, the percentage ratio has gone down. Now, by doing that, that's going to result in an increase in the money supply because, uh, first of all, there's more money to loan out, so there's more money creation, and the higher potential deposit multiplier is multiplying uh, the money creation at a higher rate. And so we're going to have more money in the money supply. We know also, uh, as we've just said twice, that an increase in the money supply will result in a decrease in interest rates in the money market, which will encourage consumers, 
to buy more and will encourage businesses to buy more, which will result in an increase in total expenditure in the economy. Total expenditure is associated with aggregate demand. That'll be a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve. Hopefully, this time, closing the recessionary gap because real GDP is increasing to equal natural real GDP. So I'll have an increase in real GDP. And then also because more is being produced, more people are working by Oaken's law, we should see a decrease in the unemployment rate and we have expansionary monetary policy. Okay, So these are the three tools of the Federal Reserve. The, the job of using these three tools is to increase the money, money supply with the purpose of ultimately closing a recessionary gap because they're trying to expand economic activity going on in the economy. Okay, All right. This is uh, closing a recessionary gap with monetary policy. Now we're going to move on to closing an inflationary gap uh, with monetary policy, which is basically the opposite of everything that you see right here.